Well, hello! It's been long enough ever since my last upload. Let me show you what I had been working on. In this video I built this Age of Empires 2 archer range. Let's get to the build. So I know it's been a long while since my last video. A lot has been happening, I got a full time job that takes about 10 hours of my day. And evenings are quite hard to sit down on my workbench and focus after a hard day's work as well as the scorching heat of the summer. Also moving out to a new flat and my mind had been occupied with it as well. Anyway, I got some simpler projects lined up in my head for the future. So don't think I quit doing what I've been doing for more than a year now. Anyway, some of you are familiar with the way I build stuff. I built the basic shape of the structure out of cardboard material. Basically a towering part and an extension part, which I assume being the archer's barracks and sleeping quarters. I painted inside of the tower top beforehand thinking I would glue this right away and couldn't reach inside with the brush later. I cut off triangles to make a roof. Then cut off cardboard stripes to make shingles. Then placed and glued every single shingle. It's funny and stupid to say it this way every time. <laughs> While waiting for the shingles to dry, I laid the floorboard of the tower, using string sticks cutouts. From the somewhat low quality image, I spotted there is a vertical wooden detail around the top of the tower, so I glued more stick cutouts to replicate them. In order to cover some miscalculated gluing and cuts, I added skewers where they meet the top surface. And then I cut more sticks with a bit of a rounded tips to be positioned and glued on the previous wooden bits to create extra detail and some depth after the paint job. While waiting for those to dry, I started making the only door that I'll use on the extension part of this building. When it comes to medieval buildings, I almost always go with cutting a template from the cardboard and then glue sticks on it, then cut off these sticks and then cover up around the door with a cardboard strip as if it's the door frame. If you're a long time viewer you'd be familiar with this by now. Almost forgot to make the only one window for this building, so I made it the same way I made the door. For the stonework of this building, I go with the usual method of making close to scale appropriate bricks out of styrofoam. Tumble them with some rocks as usual to round and rub up their edges. And then laid them on the walls. As I explained before, it's so hot, at least in where I'm from, it takes about 10 minutes for the PVA glue to dry or lose its adhesiveness. Also, the pair of studio lights I'm using while recording to light up where I work probably makes it even faster for it to dry. So, I had to work very fast and couldn't really select the right shape of bricks. But as always, most mistakes are not even visible after the paint job and especially when the project is complete with different objects around the mistakes for our eyes to focus onto instead. For the tower part, I tried to use longer bricks at the bottom part of it for no real reason. After this, I started on the most tiresome part of the build, which was the wooden fence railing around the balcony part of the tower. For this, I used the cheap bamboo cocktail forks I bought a while ago. I cut them off and used the thicker parts to create L-shaped corners. Used regular steering sticks to cover over them from one side to the other. And glued the thinner cuts to start giving it its actual shape from the design. Used steering stick cutouts to create the X shapes. I cut off a section of it to start working on this stair extension. Since my measuring skills are shit, I had to go step by step, 
measuring and improvising on this. I glued the platform, then kept gluing sticks one after another, knowing that I can cut off extra bits later on. And since I can't see the other side of the building, I would have to improvise the way it looks from there anyway. I'll be honest and tell you that letters are probably the only one thing I hate the most. They are hard to glue with an angle and in this scale it's really hard to cut off pieces with an angle. Even if you could, sometimes even a drop of glue's weight is enough to push a piece away from the object you want to glue it onto. If you guys have any better and simpler to make ideas about letters, let me know about them in the comment section. Also, for those who use Facebook and Instagram, pause this video, go find me there to like or follow the channel over social media as well. That's where you'll find detailed pictures of anything I make. After the letters, I started building the railings by the sides. At this point, it started to feel like I'm building an actual scaffolding for an actual construction site. Due to some sections and glued pieces of it being or looking uneven as if it's put together for a purpose without any design concern. I realized that I had some leftover pieces from cocktail forks, so I decided to add them here and there to cover up some gaps and create extra texture. Okay, so I kept on building without looking at my reference picture all that much. I forgot the wall extension of this building. So I had to cut off some of the glued wooden parts under the stairs platform in order to fit a wall through there. As I said before, I can't measure for shit and rely on improvising too much sometimes. So to create a wall structure, I relied on the cardboard stuff again. Basically made a rectangular section and covered its roof with the same material with a bit of a random angle. Then covered its roof with steering sticks to create a similar look from the original picture. Once I made sure there is no wooden part of the stairs platform blocking this, I glued it in its place. Since there was not much of a space left to cover this with styrofoam bricks and in order to save time I created the stony texture with super glue baking solar combination. My longtime viewers would have seen me utilize this method on many builds. End result is always great looking cheap and easy way to replicate stone cement look. After that I started building, I don't know what this is, let's call it A or D shade out of steering sticks as usual. This one I had to build in a hurry and ended up being a bit flimsy so I had to be very careful while gluing it. Once everything was ready, I painted it all with cheap black craft paint. Then I painted the stone parts with a random mixture of grey. I used craft paints for this as well. I didn't really want to use my primers for this, I'm kinda tight on money. And didn't want to use expensive paints all that much on very cheap materials. I could achieve almost identical results with both types of paints anyway. Then I dry brushed the stonework with a lighter bone color. For the shingles, I normally should have painted them in a brownish color, but I like the terracotta-like color. I applied it in a 50-50 water paint ratio on purpose. Then I started painting the wooden bits of this while waiting for the roof paint to dry. I applied the second coat of shingle paint. Didn't really like that result all that much, so I mixed some brown in the paint and applied it again. Benefits of working with cheap paints, you don't really care all that much of wasting it. As long as the model is not an expensive one, which almost everything I make is not. Once that dried, I dry brushed the shingles with Vallejo's natural wood grain color. It was a gamble that paid off to be honest. After enough painting with the cheap paints, I started painting the wooden bits with various mixtures of various Vallejo paints like cork brown, old wood, new wood, black red and wood green. 
in my videos I say Vallejo so much people would think that I'm sponsored by them. I wish I was to be honest but I'm not. Vallejo was the first brand I ever bought and stuck with it, never felt the need to try different brands. After applying enough layer of different paints and mixtures I applied black wash on the wooden parts. They looked way too dull so I wanted to add some depth to them. After the wash I applied weathering powders as usual to the bottom parts of both building sections. Next I started working on the greenery on the shade. For this I glued a pre-made polyester tree canopy. Again people who watched earlier episodes are familiar with this. I make a bunch of this in bulk in various colors and make my tree canopies with this stuff. Once the glue dried enough, I sprinkled thin flock over it in various coats and applied hairspray every now and then to make the flock stick better. Next order of business was to make four target boards out of leftover cardboard and steering sticks. I painted them using Vallejo cork brown, white and red. cut off tiny parts from steering sticks to represent arrows on them. Speaking of arrows, I chose the three figures from Mini Art's 7th second scale French Knights I had in my figure stash. I primed them with Vallejo Grey Primer as usual. Then started painting them, starting with skin parts using Vallejo Clad Flash. Painted the metallic parts of their armors with Vallejo's natural steel. Chose calorie brown color to be the matching color of these three soldiers' outfits. I like the pose of these figures quite a bit. In fact, I think it's becoming harder to find the knight or archer figures in 7th second scale. If it wasn't for this reason, I would have thrown away these figures a long time ago. Their mold is so bad, it's even quite hard to paint them right. I complained about this a long time ago in another project's video. Once I got the calorie brown parts out of the way, I painted their pants, shirts, etc. With various brownish colors like cork brown, leather brown, old wood, even mixture of all these I just mentioned. Carefully tried to paint their leather straps and belts with leather brown, painted the bows, the quivers and the arrows again with cork brown, old wood and new wood colors. Painted the bugle of this one in bronze for no real reason, I just like the bronze paint. Once I was done with the painting, I applied a dark red filter over their outfits and applied black wash as well as flash wash. Before I was done with the figures I applied some weathering powders on their boots to add somewhat of a realism. Now with the figures are out of the way I started on the base. For the base, I used a foam core, cut a section of 23 by 24 centimeters in size, covered it up with regular PVA glue, only to remember that foam core would be bent so much because of the PVA glue, so I stopped adding more of it and switched to a tighter glue. Then covered over that with two different types of ground flock as much randomly as possible. Then I put all the elements of this on the base in order to spot where I would add grass and foliage on. Applied static grass, although I don't think my applicator works properly anymore. I'll either find time to build one again or purchase one, I haven't decided yet. Once that dried, I started to glue the pieces on the base. The foam core bent as I feared it would, so I had to glue these with the help of some CA glue and a pair of dumbbells to help push it down off the camera. 
I cover the gaps where objects meet the base with foliage as I usually do, as well as add random foliage here and there to cover bald spots. It ended up being too green, so I applied some leftover brownish color foliage from the previous diamond project. Placed and glued the target boards where they are depicted in the original picture, and placed the archers facing the target boards. My only regret here is that actual armor and clothing detail of the archers ended up facing the other way. But there is no way to reverse it, so I had to take it. Finally, added the last figure on the top of the tower and closed it off. That's all for this video and this build. I love making medieval stuff, especially stuff from Age of Empires game. Even though my audience tends to love sci-fi robotic stuff more. It was a fresh change of scenery for me after a 4 part sci-fi mech building stuff across the past, what, 2 months? Or even more, I really lost the track of time. <laughs> anyway, I hope you liked it and enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, don't forget to find me over Instagram or Facebook and follow me or like me there as well. In the next video, I'll complete something I made some months ago. Hit the bell button to be notified for that video and the upcoming ones. I'll see you all in the next one.